Hey girl, hey, welcome to my own damn show. My name is Emily, but you can call me Ems. And today I'm here to do some cooking in my kitchen. I recently cleaned my like kitchen area so that this island is completely cleared off so that you guys have a good view of what I'm doing down here. But I can stand up fully, so I'm really excited that I've kind of worked that out so that we can do some cooking. Today, I'm gonna be making my version of vegan bibimbap. The first step is gonna be cooking our rice. So I've got my rice cooker bowl here. I'm actually going to be using basmati rice because that's all I have right now, but I really want bibimbap this evening and I thought, you know what, whatever. Rice is rice is rice is rice. I'm not making sushi. It's not going to fall. It's not going to be a huge disaster. So I've got my rice scoop here, like a little cup. I'm going to add one of those and I'm going to add two of these of water. We have that in there. I'm just going to give this a quick stir. Add a little bit of sesame oil and a little grind of salt there. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, but you can use any kind of salt you want. I actually got my Himalayan salt at my dollar store. You never know what you're going to find there, so give it a check out. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in the rice cooker back there. Now that I've got the rice starting back there, I'm gonna take my cucumber and I'm going to cut it into a fine, like, matchstick size. I don't know what that would be called julienne. Is julienne strips or is that matchstick? Or is matchstick a completely different thing? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna take my cucumber here. I'm gonna go with about, I don't know, two and a half inches of cucumber, about, five centimeters inch, I guess. Don't throw out your little cucumber butts. You can use that on a sandwich later. So what we're gonna do to make these is we're gonna cut them into slabs first. Just cut them into slabs. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I want mine to be fairly uniform. I'll just use that part pieces that I messed up for a snack later. Pop those over there for a snack. So what I'm gonna do now that I have these slabs, is I'm just gonna go across and mash stick them. So there we have our carrot, uh, not carrot, cucumber. You could do the same thing to carrots, but I have carrots that are already mashed sticked here just cause that's what I happened to buy this week. This pre matched sticked carrot. They're not as even, but they're still pretty good. What I'm gonna do next is something that I got from actually Jenny Mustard's Bibimbap. Mine's a little bit different, but I'm kind of excited to try this out before this out. So put your cucumber into this little dish. She did it with cucumber and radish, and then she cooked her carrots, but I like my carrots very crunchy still. So I'm gonna do my carrots as well. I'm just gonna throw in some carrots. I like lots of carrots, so we'll go with lots of carrot. What we're going to do with these is put a little bit of rice vinegar on them. We got our rice vinegar. It's going to put a little bit on them. And that's going to sit until our rice is done cooking, and that's why I did these first. Next, I'm going to cut up some cherry tomatoes. I just figured I have these in the cupboard, so I might as well use them. I'm gonna cut up a few. Not really like any particular number, but I'm just gonna cut them in half so that they're not exploding. Because I like the pop that cherry tomato, tomatoes have, but I don't wanna like suddenly like juice all over somebody. I think, I think about six is a good number to get a decent amount on top of the bibimbap. So we have that. Now I'm just going to lay these aside as well. And next we have to make the sauce. All right, so the first thing we need for our bibimbap sauce is gochujang. Gochujang is Korean hot red pepper paste. Um, I have the one in medium hot. Um, I find Korean red pepper has an interesting kind of heat to it. I find it's not like an instant heat. I find it's kind of 
the Korean flavors kind of make it kind of sweet at first, but then it kind of like builds up and builds up, and that's an interesting kind of heat, and I kind of like that. We're gonna go for about two tablespoons, but I'm just gonna get myself a blob here. A blob. And I have a second spoon to be able to scrape it off into the bowl here. Got a little teeny tiny bowl working. And I find having two spoons in this process is really good because gochujang is very, very, very thick and it's kind of hard to control. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of a sweetener, um, either honey, agave, you can even use sugar. I'm gonna use maple because that's what I have today. I'm kind of interested to see if maple will mix well with it or not. Um, maybe don't do this until you see to the end of the video when I taste it. We're adding just a little bit. Just a, a wee splash of sweetener. You could use rice syrup or anything you want. Um, if you're in the UK, golden syrup probably would work quite well. Now the reason I'm adding the sweetener first is because the thickness of it I think will mix well with the thickness of the gochujang. And you just want to mix it up until they become a uniform taste. There, that's already started to loosen up our gochujang. You see that? Before it was clinging to the spoon and not moving and now just adding that little bit of sweetener has helped it to decongeal, I guess. We're gonna add a bit of soy sauce. This is low sodium soy sauce. Well, reduced sodium. Soy sauce isn't really low in sodium, but I prefer to go low sodium if I can. And you want to add about a tablespoon of that. You could go for two tablespoons if you want it a little saltier, if you're a bigger fan of salt, but I want a good balance of flavors. Now with this, you want to mix a lot slower than we did with the maple syrup because you don't want soy sauce going all over your kitchen unless you go for like a bigger bowl which I kind of recommend but this is the bowl I want to serve it in because I'm not going to drizzle the sauce on until I'm ready to eat because we're going to make it look pretty first. Now I know bibimbap a lot of times you just literally put gochujang straight in but I wanted to make a bit of a sauce. I'm using about the same amount of, bit of gochujang that you'd use but I kind of like the mixture of flavors so we're going for that. At this point, I'm gonna scrape off my little spoon with my big spoon so that I can make sure I get all the gochujang incorporated. Mix again. Basically, we're trying to make it thinner and thinner with different flavors so that it will mix well with the rice without having to like mash it inside. So we've got that. Next, we're gonna add some rice vinegar. It's coming back, guys. Just a good tablespoon, I'd say. Mix that well, but slowly. Remember, you don't want this going everywhere. Because if this goes everywhere, you're gonna get gochujang everywhere, and you don't know if that's gonna stain. Not as bad as turmeric, though. Turmeric's worse. So now I'm gonna add some powdered ginger. About a teaspoon. And I'm gonna add some garlic. Um, this is just a giant thing of minced garlic because I use garlic in everything. I don't wanna get gochujang in it though because I use it for a bunch of different types of cooking. And we're gonna put uh, two to three cloves worth, or one, one to three cloves worth depending on your taste for garlic. I love garlic, so I'm putting two big teaspoonfuls, which is kind of like three cloves-ish. And we're gonna give that a mix. Now we can give it a taste. Ooh, there's the spice. Not instant, but oh, it's good. Mm. I find I can handle like gochujang spice like uh, more Korean, like gochugaru, gochujang spice, a lot better than I can handle like the spices in like Mexican cooking. 
don't know why. Couldn't tell ya. But this kind of like chili, I can handle more than I can like jalapeno and things like that. But there you go. Next, I'm gonna work on my greens. And the reason I'm doing it now is because I like them to still be warm when the rice is cooked. And I'm gonna be doing broccoli. Um, I use frozen broccoli just because it's it's cheaper nowadays with it being fall and nearly nearly winter. I mean, it's snowing outside right now here in Canada. Um, well, my part of Canada. Canada's huge. We have a lot of different weather here, but I just like it because it's a little bit cheaper at this time of year and it's easier to keep in the freezer. I can just have it anytime I want and I really love things like pad thai and stir fry and this is really good to have on hand at all times. So I got a very small pan just because I'm going to do just a little bit of broccoli. So I'm going to get a good handful. This will shrink when it cooks so I'm going to get a little more than a handful. Just a pan full. Fill that pan up. What I'm going to do is instead of cooking it with oil I'm going to add a little bit of water at the bottom just to get it cooking. And then we're going to try and get as much of that water out of it before we put it in the bin box. The rice is done. Now while the broccoli is on the stove over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some onion powder to get a little bit of an oniony flavor in there as well. Now we have the rice out of the rice cooker. Well, I mean, it's in the pot, but I'm gonna give it a stir up just because my rice tends to stick a little bit to the bottom of my rice cooker because uh, one time it was cleaned with a metal scouring pad. So it's kind of lost some of its non-stickness at the bottom, but it still works really well as a rice cooker. It just needs a little scrapey screw with the rice paddle. There, our rice is all cooked up and we can add it to our bowl. Um, I'm not using a normal bowl, I'm using actually a small mixing bowl because most of the bowls I have are not the most uh, deep, like good enough for a bibimbap. So this is what we're gonna use. All right, so our broccoli's done. I'm just going to scoop it up with my spoon, let some of the water drain off. I'm gonna place it into my bowl in one little sector. This one, ha this broccoli had stem pieces as well, and don't don't throw away the stems. Stems are perfectly edible. I'm just gonna save the florets to put on the very top because I'm gonna layer them in a little bit. So just put your stem pieces as a base so that your florets can look really pretty on the top. So we've got our broccoli in there. Next, I'm gonna place our tomato. Then our carrot, just gonna squeeze the excess out of that. Put our carrot on top. And our cucumber. You don't want to do that if you got any cuts in your hand because that vinegar will stink. Next, I'm going to add some kimchi on top. And this kimchi I made myself. Mmm, it smells so good. It's been a little while since I've made it. a couple of months so it's very it's pretty ripe kimchi but it's still really good fermented foods are good for your gut and finally I'm gonna take a little bit of green onion and I'm just going to trim it in with my little scissors and that is my version of bibimbap with sauce. Let's do some close up, shall we? And here's my lovely bibimbap. The rice is underneath. Usually I'd want to see some rice here in the middle, but I got all my green onion there. And the bowl is like really high, but not wide, so that's why. Got my sauce on the side. And of course I got my water, chopsticks to help mix if I need it, and my spoon, because you eat bibimbap with a spoon. All right, so let's give this a try. I'm gonna mix it up first. Get that rice up from the bottom. We have it mixed up. We can add our sauce. Ooh, yeah. So, let's give it a 
try. Get some different vegetables in there. Mmm. All the different vegetables, the different textures, the spice from the gochujang. There's a bit of something from the ginger coming back at you. The garlic, of course. Mm mm mm. And the vinegar gives it a freshness to it. Well, I'm ready to go stuff myself silly with vegetables and rice. What are you guys cooking for dinner tonight? Let me know in the comments below. Bye! Thanks for watching!